Hello beautiful Leo friends. Welcome to the channel. I'm so glad you've joined me today. If you're new, a special hello and thank you to all the returning subscribers. Let's look and see what the mutual energy is between you and your love partner. But before we do that, let's cut the deck. Let's see what's at the bottom of the deck. Well, two of cups. Leo, happy birthday by the way. Two of cups. That's a bride and groom card in the Rider Waite deck. It's soulmate energy in the minor arcana. It's Cancerian energy, a very nurturing, loving relationship, and that is your overall energy. All right. Both of you are probably overthinking the relationship, but Leo, there you are in the reading with all your passion, all your heat, really bringing it to the table intuitively. Both of you know that you love one another. Look at that. Nice energy. Okay, Leo. So let's see what we have. We're going to go ahead and shuffle. I like to let the cards pop out. The Sun card, Mutual Energy. Leo, what is happening for you? Oh, fantastic. There you are in your reading. It is in the recent past. The happiest card in the deck. The last time you and your beloved spent time together, it looks like. You both thought it was a great deal of fun, and it really was a beautiful reminder of why you love each other. That is a, an incredible card with that Two of Cups. What the mutual energy is at this time is both of you are very busy being single and successful. It really speaks to the fact that you're both very comfortable being single and successful. And when we clarify, we're going to look to see if that, that in somehow gets in the way or helps the relationship usually it's very helpful but both of you are very attractive very successful very well received in the world at large both of you have many options because of your absolute successful um, and good looks everything about you is attractive to the opposite sex and or anybody who is your partner as a potential so it's great energy but both of you are very independent and very capable of being alone that's part of what you like about each other your person sees and views the situation as calling for them to throw caution to the winds to take the leap of faith to come in and have some fun this person wants to take you out, have some fun. They view you as a page of cups. So it's really interesting that, that they view themselves as a fiery, passionate page and that you're the very, you're the lovely, emotional page. Really interesting. I've never seen that kind of energy coming off of those two cards. All right, your seven, the seven of coins tells me that your person is highly invested in the relationship, and that's Taurus energy. Taurus energy is all about the second house. It's Taurus energy is the daddy, the family, everything that your person values. They value, they place a very, very high value on you, Leo. They feel as though they've been let, invested a lot in the relationship and that they want to go the distance with you. And what did I just say? Here we go. There's a Taurus king. So that is how they view the relationship going forward. They view the relationship as being one that is going to be stable, that it could be lifelong. You may never get married formally. I'm not sure how that's going to go, but that remains to be seen. But your person feels very passionate. The passion, the fire, they feel that every day with you. The library behind your person suggests that they're very elevated in their career. It suggests that they're brilliant at what they do. They know how to bring in the coin. They're very comfortable and they're very loyal. So when we get the dog card, you know, it's a beautiful big German shepherd. And so what it speaks to is the absolute loyalty your person has for you. And they view you as loyal. They view the relationship as absolutely a potential relationship for long-term commitment. Both of you in your hidden energy are all up in your head. You're not speaking sometimes when things go sideways, when you don't know what to say or do. Both of you just clam up. All right, I feel like I need to do like under the sea, right? A little music from under the sea playing. But what we see here is, you know, this Eight of Swords energy, Gemini energy. It looks as though the two of you have trouble communicating, that you just always censor everything you say to each other. And in the process, the communication can get, it's almost like your two children who are afraid to speak the truth because you're so afraid that it will come, that both of you will kind of fall apart emotionally. 
Spirit has got three cards for you. Spirit says Wheel of Fortune, oh, four cards. <laughs> Look at that. They just flipped out of my hand. Spirit is saying that you need to get over your sadness. You both need to give up on that. There's still two cups remaining back there. You know, don't don't stay in this energy because the Wheel of Fortune is about to turn in your favor. Look at your person is coming in here. Uh, that's Aries energy. So it could be you, Leo. But a great deal of success, a lot of strategy. Use strategy to heal the relationship. Both of you have are very powerful beings. We can see that in the nine of coins. You know, your person really wants success too, but you're not talking. Oh my goodness. You have very major communication issues. I do astrology. If if anyone here wants a reading, I, I can do a, a, a couple's chart for you. But your outcome is the Ace of Coins. That is a very beautiful, loving offer coming in. The Ace of Coins, I like to say, reminds me of all of those like sort of you know, the urchins in the street of London, you know, running through going, hey, is that a coin? And they put it between their teeth and it's gold or it's wooden and they check it out that way. This is a gold coin of opportunity and the opportunity is around the possibility of marriage. So your person, you know, what as you really wrap up this period of time in your relationship, you are looking at a legacy relationship in which you would have a very rich, full life. You, there would be financial abundance. There are There's extended family. There's so much love. So if both of you have children from another relationship or you don't, whatever, that is beautiful energy because it speaks to the fact that there's a dog for loyalty. The generations are taken care of. Grandparents, children, friends, siblings. It's one of my very favorite cards in the deck, and that is your outcome card at this time. So let's go ahead and clarify your cards for you and really see what's happening here, because you we're going to have to really ferret out what's going on with these cards. These cards are not strong enough when all the rest of the reading is exquisite, okay? And this Eight of Swords tells me that you're almost childlike in your communications. Okay, so why do we have the Two of Cups here? <laughs> oh, you guys, see, what did I say about communication? What did I say? I said basically that you're, you're like children and you're not really giving each other what you need and you're holding back. Well, you're being almost to the point of dishonesty. The Seven of Swords says you both love each other very clearly, but you're not talking about it. The Seven of Swords energy is Aquarius energy. It's supposed to be enlightened, and I think this is coming to light for you now. Judgment card is Scorpio energy, releasing that. You need to release the secrecy, the sneaking around, the, the fear. This is fear-based spying. This is very fear-based, you know, I'm going to get hurt, so I'm going to need to keep my knife out. No, 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 you don't need to do that. Judgment card says release this negative energy. You love each other. You really, truly love each other. So, you know, Spirit is saying let go. Look at this. Here we have a repeat now. So we have the Ten of Coins. So the energy of the Ten of Coins is really saying, again, you both want legacy, that the overall energy is that this is headed towards marriage. The Three of Swords is a breakup, and it looks like it was in the past with the Nine of Swords. <clears throat> both of you at some point earlier, it looks like you have broken up and come back together with the Judgment card because we get release, you know, negativity, and then you're moving into this energy of the Ten of Coins. But both of you are fearful. You're all in your head. Look at this. Eight and Nine of Swords. Seven of Swords. Seven, eight, nine. It doesn't get any worse than that. But the good news is that you're not at the Ten of Swords. Nobody has stabbed each other in the back. So what I'm seeing here is you're, you're both on a head trip of fear. Big time fear here. The Page of Coins says that for the Eight of Swords energy, you both need to get very grounded. Look at pages again, though. Okay, but the Page of Coins is really the page that is the most mature. It's the Virgo energy. Virgos, even at a young age, know how to solve problems. And if you don't learn to communicate, you're going to find the Tower card is going to bring the relationship down. The Tower card in this particular instance says that you could be very overreactive to one another. 
It's a very volatile energy. The tower card says that you need to build more of a foundation, that you need to start small and work to bigger energy. So dial it back, don't overreact. Ex assume the best here because I see such love here, such investment. Okay, so why do we have the sun card in the recent past? And there it goes flying on the ground, of course. There we go. Oh, there it is. Okay, one of my favorite cards a temperance card so it really speaks to the fact that in the recent past you've become much much better at trusting one another balancing your relationship out staying calm cool and collected so it does speak to the fact that even though both of you are very strong personalities you're very strong people that you're mellowing out of this fear-based energy both of you were heartbreaking in the broken in the past from be from lovers that came before, and you carried that into the relationship. It disrupted the relationship, but at this time you're moving forward beautifully. And it does look like you've reconciled. This looks like the second opportunity to make a relationship work for most of you. Look at the Queen of Cups, beautiful Queen of Cups energy. You both love each other so much. You're both actually quite emotional people. But what we're seeing here is that the emotionality that caused what was what looks like was a breakup in the past, as you come back together, you're dropping that energy. You're leaving that in the past. We love the Queen of Cups. I mean, the Queen of Cups couldn't be more nurturing or beautiful, but it has to be balanced. And now we have the balance coming in. Temperance, Sagittarius energy. The Nine of Cups, look at when the two of you are together. Oh, I think that you strut your stuff in public. It really looks, this is all about community, Nine of Cups. The Nine of Pentacles says that when you go out, you look super sharp. You look exciting as a couple. People love to be in your presence. The two of you love to be in one another's presence. You really sparkle and shine. It looks as though you can move very swiftly through a lot of social situations. That you're highly regarded. You're highly desirable. You'd be the party couple that people would want to invite and on the holidays it looks like you would have too many parties to go to so you would have to go in and out energy knight of wands energy now if we look at this from just purely as a romantic standpoint it does show me that both of you are so attractive to the opposite sex and people flirt with both of you so much both of you are flirts, both of you enjoy it, but that doesn't mean you're doing anything because here, look at what we have. We have the Three of Pentacles, which is Capricorn energy. So even though you can be that sort of sparkling in the limelight with each other, we do see that this Capricorn energy is very grounded, you know, and, and the three is very interesting. It is a sign of Trinity. I do not see this as a third party. Uh, I have to see a set of cards that indicate third party to me. But what I get here is that this is collaboration. This is your ability. When we look at astrology, when we do a chart, the way we do a composite chart is what it's called, is that we take the charts of the two people and we find the middle point in their planets and it creates a third chart. So whenever I see the three of coins, my frame of reference is just, you know, really learning to work together, to pull together both of you when things are going well. You two are a wonderful team. You really make for a wonderful team. Creatively, it looks like you could really go off the charts with your creati creativity, that you would have so much fun doing that. Look at this, winner, winner, chicken dinner. We see your person wants an absolute victory with you. Really, really cool because, but it is, it is a bit ego driven. It does show that sometimes your person, you know, your person fantasizes about you. I will say that they do fantasize about you, but I would also say I'm not fond of that seven of cups card. What I do think happens is that your person is in the limelight. And because they're in the limelight and because your person's very outgoing and a lot of fun, I do get that, that they have a lot of offers. People, people try to, people come on to them, to put it bluntly. So that would, that would really cause both of you, you know, possibly to be immature in your communication style. Tell us about that Seven of Cups card. We don't like that old Seven of Cups here other than your person fantasizes about you. 
The queen, oh nice, okay. Well, this is a Libra queen and the Libra queen rules the seventh house of committed relationships. That is Libra energy. So basically what it says is that, yes, your person gets lots of offers and yes, it gives them pause for thought sometimes because of their ego. This card says that they will not go the way of the Seven of Cups. That's a clarifier for the Seven of Cups. They have great clarity that they understand the repercussions of, of just you know, willy-nilly, being kind of stupid in the relationship is not what they want. They want stability. They want love. You know, they're really shooting for this Ten of Coins card, and you don't get it with the Seven of Cups. That's And that is, <laughs> that is the energy. The Seven of Cups is Scorpio energy, but it does speak to the fact that Scorpio is always thinking very deeply. Six of Swords energy, moving away from that energy, beautiful. <coughs> I need a drink of water. One second, please. <coughs> Excuse me. All right. I really like this. This is Aquarius energy. It's enlightened energy. Aquarius and Leo are good energies together because Aquarius keeps a cool head. So it does show your person may have some Leo in their chart. They could have Scorpio in their chart. <clears throat> but I see all the signs here. Why do we have the Page of Cups for how they view you, my friends? How do we have, why do we have the Page of Cups? Interesting. All right. So your person sees you as a really lovely person, but you probably don't earn as much money as they do. So there wouldn't be an equal financial investment. <clears throat> and understandably so. Your person looks like they have great mastery and they may be even a public figure with that wreath standing on the stage. This is accolades, so. But look at that, they do see you as their future. They see you as a person that they would like to spend their life with. This is really about, your ships have arrived in the harbor, you are the one. We've gone past the two of wands, which is making the choice, to the three of wands, you are chosen. So what we see here for you, Leo, is this beautiful energy. It's Aries energy. It's Tiki Torches, Starry Nights. She has a beautiful outfit on. She has a beautiful surfboard. It's about adventure. It's about the fact that the two of you have a lot of heat. You have a lot of love from the water, heat from the Tiki Torches. The surfboard is about the adventure, the excitement. Both of you are exciting. You are childlike in the way that you love with the ability to provide excitement excitement, laughter, joy, a sense of real liveliness in the relationship. And so that really is the way that you give back to this relationship. And it's powerful, Leo. And here we have the Four of Wands. You are also very stable. You are basically, honey, I'm home. You know, this is a home. It's about buying a home together. It's about living together. It's about being married. It is 1111. If you have a twin flame and this is a twin flame for you, then you are in the right place and they see you as their divine partner. Why do we have the seven of coins? This is Taurus energy. Magician card. Oh, your person is manifesting you. And you know what? Sometimes I think your person is a little sneaky deaky. And I think that they keep you on the edge of your seat, maybe as a way to control you a little bit. Because when we get fixed signs and we do see the Taurus King here, that is a fixed energy. You know, and when we see fixed signs in Leo, you're a fixed sign. Both of you are very strategic about getting your needs met. And that's what I see with your person. In their heart space, you are magical to them. You are pure heaven, pure magic. You have everything they could possibly want. And they are highly invested in you. But they're not telling you. Once again, lots of secrecy, all of, all of that secrecy. They're just not opening up and telling you what they think, what they feel. <clears throat> and the reason is that they think that if they tell you how they feel, they will somehow threaten their position of authority. Um, we see here that that is a honey, I'm home card. You know, that's the that's the emperor coming in, driving quickly towards you. You have two major arcanas for the heart space. Your person's fear about this is that somehow the relationships of the past will create a burden. <clears throat> It will create a burden in this relationship. And again, I think for most of you, you are in round two 
of a relationship breakup makeup relationship okay that's how i read this reading and both and your person again king of swords queen of swords energy your person does not want this to end they do not want to have to give up the ghost and walk away it does look like for many of them they are moving though in the near future because the ten of wands along with <clears throat> in this particular deck along with the six of swords can mean moving physically to a different location there's a lot of baggage that they have to deal with right now in moving forward with you in the relationship because we get the chariot card so the ten of wands with the chariot card is they're moving towards you why is the king of pentacles here why do we have the king of pentacles here we have the queen of pentacles i can't make this up i cannot make it up your person feels as though you are their divine partner well again we have an 11 11 series over here you know we have that twin flame four of wands card so the cards that just went flying out of the deck i'm not going to keep these out but um but i always think it's significant when i have things just fly out of my hands we get the two of cups, a deep love for you, a desire for marriage. They haven't told you, and they're so afraid that the two of you will get emotional with this Pisces energy, and the confusion will cause the death of the relationship. So that's a very powerful message about your person and how they feel about the way forward with you. Let's see what else we have. That's amazing, actually. I like the fact that your person is very aware, even if they haven't told you that they're aware. Okay, the Eight of Coins. They want to be very practical. They want to be very down to earth. They want to really learn what it takes to make this work. So the Eight of Coins goes to the Nine of Coins. It goes to the Ten of Coins. Love it, love it. We have the Ten of Coins twice here. So with that um, King of Coins and the Queen of Coins, I think you are well on your way here. Why do we have the energy? I've clarified that. Okay, so why do we have the four, the five of cups? Well, you've been alone. You've had time to think. Spirit said, be very, very careful about getting a bad attitude. You know, remember, go to the mountain, find answers. A lot of times your answers are within, and what you should do will become intuitive when you really give it a deep thought. Why is the emperor here? Look at that. We have the emperor with the king of wands. So spirit is really saying that both of you are very powerful in the relationship. Both of you have the ability to take care of yourself. And it really speaks to the fact that you both have a lot of pride. Leo, that's you. You have a lot of pride. And your person's very strategic, very well positioned. So it does look like it's a very good match. The wheel of fortune turns in your favor, but you don't see it coming. Why don't you see it coming? Okay. You're moving through a new transition in your life, and that's an upgrade. I really like the world card. To me, it is the end of one very successful cycle and the beginning of a new one, which can include marriage. It, again, I'm getting a very strong marriage vibe here. Now, somebody here thinks that they wouldn't like to be married, married or they're afraid of it, but Spirit has said, do your healing work. Wheel of Fortune turns in your favor that you are now about to recognize that this is your significant other for lifetime. Let's see what else we have for clarifier. Okay. Ah, the Emperor clarifies the Emperor. You have the power. You have the ability. Spirit is just saying, own your power. Be strategic. Be smart. Understand Spirit has your back. You know, just do your healing work. You know, just make sure you stay stable. That's really the overwhelming message is just be cool. Show up, do what you're supposed to do. And we have the Aries Queen of Wands with the King of Wands. So it's a good match. There's a really strong yin-yang balance here that is rare. Okay, so the clarifier for the Ace of Coins is a moon card. You don't see this coming, Leo. I just, you don't see this coming. This, at times, if we had the Three of Cups, we could possibly look at an engagement ring as the Ace of Coins. But right now, your person doesn't know exactly what to offer you. So they're offering you passion. Um, they're offering you uh, very, very heated nights. 
Your person, though, is very egocentric about what they have to offer. They feel as though if you don't want what they have to offer, they would that would actually start an argument. They, your person wants to feel like they're good enough with you. And even though they're very successful, your person has some insecurities, you know. Both of you have some insecurities. That's where those that we had the Page of Cups and the Page of Wands. So it really says that the only thing that can unravel your relationship is nonsensical arguing. That Five of Wands. Don't get egocentric here. Don't get lost in your emotions. And don't speak out of turn. Enjoy. If you're feeling a heated moment, you know, and you really are feeling intense emotion, go make love, not war, okay? <laughs> Don't make war. Okay, so let's see what we have here for the Ten of Coins. You really need to just temper yourself and, and get out of your head. Stop living in a sense of fear. Just don't let, re you can let history repeat itself if you really want to do that, but I don't think you do. And I don't think you need to. The Ace of Swords says that although you don't have clarity, the Ace of Swords reversed is it just shows that you're not, you don't know what you know yet. You're not feeling confident. The Ace of Swords says both of you want the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. But it shows that you both have some fear. That's my energy around that card. Is that you're almost, you are both afraid to think that, the, that you think this is too good to be true is what I'm getting. You think this is too good to be true. You have to believe. Both of you know that you don't want to make any other choice. Both of you know you want to move forward very rapidly. Both of you know that you want a rebirth. So, you know, again, I see this as a couple that has been apart who came together and now you're trying to make it work. So the death and rebirth is beautiful energy. I want to go ahead and clear that death and rebirth with um, the message of love oracle card. So let's see what we have for that. I just see this. This could go either way if you let it get out of control. If you let it get out of control, you'll just hit the skids again. But if you're very thoughtful, you move forward, you share your feelings, you're able to transcend, because that's what this is, transcend all of your darkest fears and worries, you will be able to have this beautiful Ten of Coins and be quite happy. Lean on your inner circle at this time. I really see this as a leaning on each other. You know, really, really talk to each other, be supportive of each other, you know, open up at least enough to say, look at, I don't always know my way, my lover, I don't always know my way with you, I don't always know what to say or do, but please know that I always love you as a message that you should be providing for one another. Okay, so what else do we have here? Here protected. You are safe and divinely guided here. So let's look at the Shaman's Dream Oracle for further advice. And um, I really see a wonderful potential. There's pitfalls. There's some pretty big pitfalls, but you can avoid them and you actually know that you can avoid them. You want to avoid them. And that flipped over. Diving into a task and divine feminine. Okay. So for all of our feminines out there, you are the divine feminine and that you will end this cycle beautiful energy with heart and home that's the very essence of the ten of coins energy that's heart and home hearth and home right there so know that you can have it believe it see it all right leo it's been a joy thank you so much thank you